Hello and welcome back to the Pick Swap Podcast. I am James Brain. As usual, I am here with Sean Bernard, who is currently in hiding, I guess, right? So how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm all right. I tested positive for COVID, so uh, in quarantine right now, but um, still feel fine. No, no real symptoms so far. So other than that, staying optimistic. I'm all good. Yeah, man, that's uh, it's it's tough to hear. It's the world we live in right now. Um, and it's September 7th, which is always a sad day. Rest in peace to Mac Miller. I got my Ducey cup with me at all times. So, you know, <laughs> shout out to Mac and, and all that. So yeah. we'll get into it today. There's there's not too much to talk about. Um, there's been a little bit of another lull. And I guess that we should just be expecting another report at some point um, about Ben. But really, I don't even want to talk about it too much today. We've covered all the bases on that. Uh, everyone knows where we stand and, and, and all that good stuff. So... To avoid that, let's just go right into talking about Daryl Morey and what the front office was able to accomplish this summer, this offseason, um, after the loss against the Hawks. What what would you well, you did a poll yesterday on Twitter um, from the, the the podcast Twitter? What was the overall like the theme of that? Was there an answer? Did people really agree or no? Yeah, it was um pretty pretty wide range to be honest. Like there was a lot of kind of different opinions on it, and I, I think for the most part, like. C was 44% at the highest, and I think that's pretty fair. I still think there's a lot up in the air with the offseason, especially given the Simmons rumors. But it went uh, 8% A, 25% B, 44% C, and 23% D and F, which I think is pretty fair overall. I would probably give it a, a C plus in my mind just because obviously once it, we're waiting on the Simmons chip to fall before we can fully grade it. But I love the Niang signing. I'm super happy about that. I'm very glad Danny Green's staying back. For a comeback, a positive for me. There's a lot of like little things that I'm happy. You know, he is working the margins. I'm higher on Jaden Springer than most people, I think. And uh, overall, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with it. Obviously, still more to come. Yeah, I think with what um what was available and what was reasonable, I think that Maury did a pretty good job. If I'm being honest, like Danny Green and Furcom being back, um on only on team friendly deals are both very critical. Um and like again, like I think. I think given the situation with both of those guys, um, if the offseason played out differently, I think that they would have been okay watching those at least one of those guys leave. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really happy that both of them are back, especially with a guy like Furcon. Like I think the Furcon signing is was huge, and I know that we we're big Furcon guys here, but like he's a very he's a very solid rotational piece that can still grow and is on a three year fifteen million dollar contract. Like. You can't really get too much better than that for a guy of his caliber. Um, and then Danny Green to come back on a lesser contract this year um, was also great. I, I like the Drummond signing. I don't love it necessarily, but I do think if he's going to play that role, the Dwight Howard 2.0 role, he's better than Dwight was last year. Um, so he's going to fit that as well. And then upgrading from Mike Scott to, to Niang is huge. So I think given the circumstance, um, basically with their hands tied, not a lot of money to work with, um, and not a lot of movement, really, I feel like. Uh, yeah. Uh, a, a little bit of a pretty good job. The trade exception, that that expires yeah. tonight. That doesn't look like it's going to get used. There hasn't been any real traction with that. So that's a little disappointing. We have that from the Al Horford trade still. And uh, that's that'll just be gone after this. So I guess that's kind of frustrating a move for nothing. But it's it's very tight on the type of players they could add for that and finding a taker for that. So it's not the easiest task in the world. Uh I guess that would be my, my biggest disappointment. Obviously, the Simmons thing first, if that could have been swung or if something was cemented by now, and then the trade exception number two are probably my two uh, critiques of the offseason so far. Yeah, and I think a lot of it will actually end up coming back to last offseason's moves where uh, Daryl Moore only had, like, you know, a couple weeks to work with it. But uh, just between Seth Curry and Danny Green, those acquisitions, especially bringing Danny Green back, and then on top of that, the three players that he drafted – uh maxi isaiah joe paul reed those guys are looking uh to take an extra step this year into like actually helping the team um and being productive so i think part of what this offseason will net is what we saw in the summer league and what we saw from those guys that are growing into rotational pieces for this team um, we're going to talk about maxi at length here soon um but do you think that's a big reason and danny green kind of mentioned it too um that they're kind of banking on those three guys to be major parts of this team going forward this season and you think that's probably a good reason why they didn't do too much in free agency yeah 100 i mean i genuinely believe the, the leap that maxi could take this year 
is uh, significantly more than any signing that they could have made given the the financial restraints they had and the way they were handcuffed with that. And the growth that he can show and that he's indicated that he may be doing is so encouraging and something we should bank on. And beyond just Maxi, like Paul Reed, I really believe needs to be a part of somewhat a part of this rotation or a guy that at least plays minutes and is in the we're working to develop because I do think he has a skill set that is needed in today's NBA that the Sixers have lacked for years now. And just that switchable, uh, versatile big that can play the big man, even though he's a little, a little undersized, he can shoot a little bit, do it all kind of floor is huge. Isaiah Joe just loves to shoot the ball and just he reminds me of Furcon a lot. And I think that that's going to be his kind of path. So I think if Furcon had walked, that would have been a, a massive stepping point for Isaiah Joe to step into. But that being said, that you can never have enough shooting. And uh, I'm, I'm happy he's here. And I think he's a guy that is worthy of throwing a couple minutes his way and letting him uh, let it fly from deep too. So I think I, I believe in all three of these guys. Uh, he absolutely killed the draft last year, Daryl Moore, with getting these three guys in here. And I'm excited to see what they can bring to the table this year. Yeah, it was nice for them to be able to kind of fall back a little bit. Like they were, they were pretty boring this off season. Like you yeah. can't really even lie; they didn't do too much, um, and they didn't make a lot of moves. They didn't, they didn't make a change really. Like they stuck with like the system that they're in. They stuck with the positions that they're in, and then they just kind of upgraded or stayed still at those spots. Aside from like Niang and Drummond, were really the only two guys that are going to make like a huge difference going into next year. Um, watching George Hill go for nothing. And like, I don't know. I, I go back to that move a lot. Um, and basically the one thing that I, that Maury did that I was not fond of um, was getting George Hill and, yeah. and and letting Tony Bradley go in a situation where Tony Bradley would have been very, very necessary for this team. But I don't know. I think, I think overall, I mean, Maury has done a great job overall. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, if there's a move to be made, and it'll be interesting to see what Doc does with these these players and these young guys, because if their whole plan was to kind of wait and see what they had from this draft, and these are the three guys that they got, um, and now it's up to Doc to utilize these players in, in, in the right way. So you know Max is going to be getting a good amount of minutes at least, um, but does he start? Is there a way that you see Tyrese Maxey, maybe not even just at the beginning of the year, but at some point throughout the season, then making the switch to moving Tyrese Maxey into the starting lineup? Yeah, so I first sat back in this, and first off, obviously the starting lineup last year, which as it is, seems it will be the same. I still don't think there's any way that Simmons plays another game in the Sixers uniform, so that, again, once again, is the biggest card here. But I think this, no matter what happens, the Sixers must find a way to get Maxi in the starting lineup. And I know there's the belief that uh, starters aren't isn't necessarily the most important thing. Like Maxi could play more minutes than, say, Danny Green and – uh, bring more to the team with that. But I do think there's something to getting the the starting nod coming with a vote of confidence and just a like a level of play being with the starter. There's something that comes with that when it comes to like the growth of a player, the development and just the confidence in himself. So I think it's worth it that I really do believe there's something special with Maxi there. And I want to find every and juice every little bit out of him that we can get and see what he can grow into. Uh, so I, I, I don't know how exactly I want it to happen, but I really do. And I think he's deserving of that. He's done everything he's asked, and I, I want to see it happen. I would love it I, and yeah. for, for a few reasons. And I think, obviously, if I think if Ben is gone, he's going to start regardless. But I think if you bring this exact team back, your plan is to bring this team back, then you have the opportunity to change the way this team looks and plays. And not only that, to complement both of your guys, all three of your best players, pretty well i think that maxi fits really nicely with the core of um Embiid, harris simmons and it take it would take simmons off the ball which i think is a really necessary part for if you want if he is going to grow if he is going to become something more than what he is i think taking him off the ball at least some of the time is very necessary especially in the half court um and then just another guard a guy that can handle the ball dribble be confident it looks like he's expanding his range he showed a lot of growth in that area over the summer league this past year, which is incredibly exciting um, because that was really the one place that he struggled last season. So, I mean, I don't know if you go, uh, if you have a Seth Curry, Tyrese Maxey backcourt, it's very small. The mm -hmm. defense is suspect. Um, but I don't know if you want to take the shooting out of the lineup uh, of 
taking Danny Green or Seth Curry out of the lineup. It's it, they're pretty, like very integral parts to what the Sixers do and, and the spacing that it allows Embiid to have um, in the half court. But if Ma- if Maxi is able to shoot the ball the way he looked like he was able to over the summer and create his own shot um, from the perimeter, you're looking at a really really lethal aspect to this offense, and and it could be you know, something that he takes advantage of. And uh, he's very good in a lot of different areas, and he's very aggressive, which I think that they could use um, in the half court, especially early in the game. Yeah, and first off, Seth Curry, I have zero complaints about his year last year. Absolutely love to be brought to the team. He was probably probably the most consistent player in our playoff run. But I don't hate the idea of him coming off the bench, and I don't hate him coming with the second unit. And uh, especially if Simmons is not around. With Simmons, it was – for me, they were very tied together just with the spacing thing because that's just so important with his game. And not that it isn't with Embiid, and that's still – you have to have as much shooting as possible in today's NBA. But I do think if Simmons is out of the lineup and having Curry coming with a second unit and freeing him up up for some more primary looks with that could be – uh, could work out great and that's just some great production there and i'll line up with like maxi in there in place of him it's just more dynamic even last year like i i going into the year i kind of thought that shake milton might be the guy in that starting role over curry just because having another ball handler out there a guy that can uh take it up the court move it around like that i do think would be beneficial to the team and maxi provides a lot of the same things and frankly i think maxi's better than uh shake milton so i think that's an improvement there and yeah, I mean, I think Curry is probably the guy that gets demoted with this. But once again, let's see what the team looks like when the decision has to be made. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest question at this point is, you know, what's this roster going to look like in three weeks? But, you know, I mean, as of right now, when I'm looking at it, I really do. And another thing is that Maxi and Ben have been have gotten close, um, seemingly have gotten close yeah. recently. So, like, if that is something that they do bring back, if Ben is here, um, just going off that because that's the way it is right now, like without trying to make any assumptions or anything. Like Ben is here, adding Max to this lineup, I think unlocks him uh, and Tobias both because it takes the creation aspect out, like off of their shoulders. Like Maxi is able to attract defense's attention, become kind of the martyr to running that offense, and not only that, like just make things happen, especially later in the shot clock. It, it ends up with the Sixers where especially with this like uh that starting lineup it, they looked like they would get stuck at times and whatever yeah. they were trying to do didn't work and then they would get stuck in that in that spot so i would i would love to see maxi kind of inserted in that starting lineup and you made the point of seth curry getting primary looks when we're watching him in the playoffs getting primary looks he was lights out like mm-hmm. very very productive and just kind of like unguardable at times so and like you said earlier kind of like Maxi might, or I'm sorry, Curry might would end up maybe playing more than Danny Green. But if he's coming off the bench and getting primary looks at times, right. and kind of starting his offense that way, I have no problem with that either. Defensively, if you're keeping Danny Green in a backcourt with Maxi, you're looking very strong there. Although Danny Green has lost a step, he's still a very solid defender and a very smart player. So, like, I think there's definitely wrinkles to it all. There's definitely ways like that you can make that work. And honestly, like. The more that you see Maxi play, I think the harder it is to keep him off the floor because he's just been so exciting and so important to what they do whenever he's playing. Yeah, definitely. And we, when you think Maxi and Simmons, they're both obviously clutch sports guys, both uh, Chris Johnson hoops as far as their trainer. Uh, so a lot of connections there. We've seen them with all the the shooting videos and the the just run, all the all, all the highlights that are coming out this offseason. But uh, I do think like the the reports have been walked back a lot about. Uh, Maxi wanting to be forced out with Simmons, uh, which was a, a Rich Paul move. And uh, I mean, on, on a professional level from Rich Paul, like this is a great opportunity for Maxi to step into yes. the minutes that Simmons will be leaving. And this is like a prime role for him. And I think he's ready for it. And just like he's still 20 years old and he showed so much. And when we think about the starting lineup last year, like going down the stretch, there were a lot of moments in the fourth quarter where it was so much just give the ball to Joel Embiid and get out of the way. And not that I like, he's obviously our best player. He's obviously, uh, that's an isolation scorer can do it all, but just having another like creator and a guy who can get his own shot. Cause none of Curry green Tobias can a little bit, but Simmons, not really Simmons. Like there's not a lot of just shot creation in that lineup. And just that, that ability to go get a bucket and attack the basket and just the, the, the mindset that Maxi has could super could prove to be super beneficial here. 
Yeah, and I look at it a lot of ways is like two guys that would benefit significantly from being the screeners in a pick and roll set are Tobias Harris and Ben Simmons, like significantly with a guy that cre- can create. And Seth Curry is able to do that to a degree, but isn't as much of a, a creator in the pick and roll set as you'd want him to be. Whereas Tyus Maxey has the passing vision, has the ball handling ability, and as it looks like now, has the shot to go with all of that. So being yeah. a triple threat in that area, both Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris, like Tobias is great out of the screen and roll because he's lethal in the mid range. He's still, he can play the four. So popping out as a pick and pop guy, also great. And then getting a mismatch in any sort of post look for Tobias is basically like a guaranteed bucket. He's very good um, at exploiting mismatches, especially in the post. So like, I think if you want to make your team, if you want to give your team as many options as possible to make your team the best version of itself, like Maxi is very important in that sense. I don't know if you go away from what worked last year, from what, from what worked all season. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I, I think even if it takes time to get into that spot where Maxi's starting, I think it should be the end goal. Like I think as a team, like I think for Doc looking at this, especially with you know where they're trending. You should want this kid to be coming to start becoming what's next. You know what I mean? Definitely. So yeah. getting him involved now, letting him see what it's like to be the third or fourth option, and then at times giving him the ability to be the number one, number two, number three option. Like I think his growth is just as important as this team's growth. So like the way I look at it, I think it would be very beneficial for all parties. Like not just to not just Tyrese Maxey, not just the Sixers, but for Embiid, for Tobias Harris, for potentially Ben Simmons. Like I think, and then even if Seth Curry went to the bench, like it, it might help his game, uh, might help open him up in that way too. So I, I think it would be like a win, 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 win for everyone. Yeah, and there just there has to be a, a change in mindset this year as far as what the regular season is looked at. And I felt like there was such a priority last year on getting that first seed and being such a good regular season team and winning all these games, which was all great and all. And I'm not saying obviously you want to win as much as you can, but the regular season needs to be looked at as a grooming for the playoffs and getting your rotation the way you want it, trying things out, finding guys. And like, I don't care about keeping the same lineup and how great our lineup look, but the on and off splits with Joel Embiid will always be there and finding a way to combat that is the biggest issue. And I, that ties right into Paul Reed is my biggest thing with this is like come playoff time. That's even more important. And like, I, I do think there's a, a pretty likely scenario when we think back to last year's playoffs and just how unplayable Dwight Howard was in the playoffs because of he couldn't guard the perimeter. He didn't have the feet for it. He just, he is who he is at this point. And I think yeah. the same thing could very likely happen with Drummond and probably to a lesser extent because he has a little bit more to him to his game than, than Dwight does at this stage in his career. But I think just like grooming Paul Reed for that type of role to serve that to me is huge and that must be priority. And the same thing with Maxi is like, he's 20 years old, give him the keys, let him see what he can do. Like it come playoff time, he should be at least in, in the set mindset for what his role is and what it is. And that should be tinkered with all year until we can find that. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think like, again, I think it's going to be something that is felt out. I think that there's probably going to be a a time period where nobody really knows exactly. Um, But that has to be fine. Like, I, I think the Sixers got very stuck in their ways. Yeah. Uh, Doc included. Doc being probably the pinnacle of that uh, throughout the regular season because it worked. And instead of being uncomfortable at times, they just reverted back to what worked. And then what, what did work during the season didn't work during the, the postseason. Um, that's where they got lost. And that's yeah. where they ended up losing, blowing games. When other teams are changing and making you uncomfortable and you don't change too, that's where you end up getting, you know, blowing 20 plus point leads. So I'm just hoping that that's something that they see. Um, and if it takes a little bit of a hit for the Sixers for allowing other, some younger guys to grow into the position that they can end up playing in the playoffs, like that's worth it to lose a couple games in the regular season to watch these, these guys get into it, like mentally and physically into the position to be a bigger part of the team in the playoffs. Because again, they kind of ran away from him. Like Maxi helped you win on, win a couple games and then you ran away from him in a couple in a couple games and you know he was a rookie so i guess it makes sense but i do want to keep talking about the rest of these rotations um because i think the second unit is is very interesting as well um looking at it with niang and drummond and you're probably looking at say say the starting five stays the same 
now you're moving into Maxi, um, Matisse, Furkan, Niang, Drummond, which is a very interesting group. Do you think that's that's exactly the five that comes off? And who do you think is the sixth man? It's tough. I this is my thing is I love the depth. I don't necessarily love like. I, the biggest problem with the bench last year was such like in not having a consistent like who had it tonight and who didn't and that kind of thing. And I'm a little concerned it's going to be the same kind of deal. And uh, I love the Niang signing. I think him being able to play the minutes that Mike Scott simply couldn't last year is a massive deal. And having like a, a better backup for Tobias, even though Niang is a little bit undersized, like the skill set he brings as far as like he's just a straight up very good three point shooter, regardless of position and regardless of anything. And working him in to be kind of a a small four and that kind of thing and is a perfect backup for Tobias. And that's the biggest thing. I think that's probably the unit. I also, uh, and once again, this is uh, me kind of critiquing pretty much Doc's go-tos, but I don't love necessarily the, the rotating in units and having a strict first and second team and that kind of thing. Like there's nothing wrong with leaving like, like to like whoever, two of the starters out with the guys that come up next and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like it. I think, when we think of six men, if Maxi does not start, which I probably think the season starts this way, I think he's probably the likely six man candidate and the guy that gets the first look, which he definitely deserves at this point. And uh, he is like the spark that could be brought to the team. So there's definitely some some positives to that that side too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I totally agree. Like I look at this, and again, if you're if you're swapping uh, Curry for Maxi, Curry's already like immediately a six man of the year candidate. And a guy that can make a huge impact. Like I actually, now that I'm thinking about it more, like in depth, and the more that we've talked about it, like I actually love the idea of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that can be your like Curry will be your go-to score in those units. Um, Matisse is a fantastic backcourt partner for Seth Curry, considering there are highs and lows. Curry's highs being perimeter offense, and Matisse being obviously the opposite. Um, and then like Furkan gives you another shooter. Nian gives you another shooter. So like, you're not asking Matisse to do too much offensively. And then Drummond is the anchor, um, both defensively and offensively. So I think that is a, I think it's a really, really solid second unit. And it gives you a lot of different options to mix in with the starters, you know, whether that be, you need shooting and you add Furkan or Niang, uh, you need defense, you add Matisse, um, or even if like Maxi's in that unit, like, I think there's a lot of room for both all of those players to become like better versions of themselves. I think that like Matisse is protected in the right ways, but is also able to move off the ball and be become a better cutter and screener and end up in positions where he can succeed. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Burkon, like he's going to have to, you know, be not only available, but consistent. And that's where Furkan has struggled over the years. Um, and again, there like Isaiah Joe is right there. Like, yeah. Kind of breathing down Furcon's neck. So, like, if you're not playing well, we have another guy to move right into that spot. So, like, this team is really deep again, which, it, like, might be the downfall of them again because Doc will just fall in love with the fact that there's 12 playable guys on this roster. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, what do you feel in terms of, like, I know, obviously, we talked about Paul Reed a lot. Um, it, are Isaiah Joe and, and Paul Reed, are these guys getting into the rotations early or at all? I, I think Paul Reed absolutely should. I don't think he likely will. I think Doc will lean on the traditionalist of having Drummond back there. And then, um, I like to me, this is kind of a modernized NBA adjustment that needs to be made. And even for everything that Paul Reed is not, which he's such a unique player and has such a, a weird play style, but it works. And that needs to be added. That needs to be thrown in. I think Drummond, obviously, he's here for a reason, and I'm confident in the games that Embiid cannot play. I think he's a, a, a good guy to throw in to start, that he's still capable of that. Like He's still in the prime of his career, has a lot left in the tank, and still wants to be that kind of guy. So I love him for that reason. And in those scenarios, which there certainly will be games where Embiid can't suit up, then I see Reed becoming a, a part of the regular rotation. Uh, Isaiah Joe, I think, is a little bit of the odd man looking out right now, and I don't think that has anything to do with his ability, really. It's just more the numbers ahead of him. I wouldn't mind throwing him out there even ahead of Furkan sometimes just to see and kind of see what you're getting because he's a guy that has just impressed me every time he's been out there. And defensively, he's much more advanced than I thought he was after the draft and uh, with through his first year. He has more – he's significantly smaller than Furkan. He has way more of a guard uh, build than – 
I guess he had in my head, and I saw that a lot in summer league and specifically noticed that. But there is a little passing ability, a little ability to put it on the floor. So he can rotate in as like a two, which I think might be a cleaner NBA fit for him. So maybe he gets in there with that. I think, I, I mean, all around the roster, there's not like free minutes going around right now. So we'll see what happens. I, I think Joe's probably the guy that's looking at the least minutes out of anybody, but we'll see. Yeah, and I mean, the thing, the nice thing about it is you look at, that second unit or you know the second set of players matisse can play two three four like he can guard two three four uh no real problems and like what we saw from him last year there's really no reason for him to not play more than 20 minutes a game which he was playing last year obviously he was playing more down the stretch uh last season but he's another guy that needs to be primed and put in uncomfortable situations so he can flourish and get ready for the playoffs because his defense becomes more important especially in the postseason so like there's a lot of guys that you can filter in Isaiah Joe. If you need him to play the two, you can move Matisse Seibel from the two to the three or from the three to the four yeah. um, without really any problems. And, and same thing with uh, like Furkan can move from the three to the four or, or, or Niang could even move up to the three. So like there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different variations of this team that you can make, which is exciting. Um, and then a guy we haven't even mentioned is Shake Milton. So yeah. is he like, Obviously, we talked about Isaiah Joe not being quite uh, in the rotation very much. What do you think, like, we've talked about it a long time ago. We, we talked about it, and you said that you think that if there is one player on this team, like, with an attitude, it is with it is Shake Milton, uh, kind of with that, like, a little bit of a diva in him, which is, yeah. which is interesting because of, like, his track as an NBA player thus far. Um, but what do you see, what do you expect from him, not only on the court, but just his attitude of potentially not being in the rotations early on yeah i mean i don't i don't mean to attack him by any means no, and no. nothing like that but i do think he has kind of a little bit of a the loser attitude on the team if everything just kind of the, the hands up the like the yeah. looks that throw the head back that kind of stuff he kind of flashes uh first off if there does need to be a sweetener in any sort of simmons deal uh shakes the first guy i'm going to and reaching the pocket to dig out for this because just like we're not as starved for his skill set as we once were and I think Tyrese Maxey is everything Shake Milton is and more. And I, to me, that's enough reason. I have enough belief in him that he should be taking any minutes that were previously Shakes. Uh, as far as if he is around and say the trade is that ends up happening is just Simmons for something. And that's all the six to give up. Uh, I think he's behind Maxey. I think Maxey probably, if Maxey starts, which I know there, there's so many layers here trying to hammer it down, but Say Maxi's the starter. Shake's probably your number one guy off the bench for for him, and they do have a similar similar skill set in that. I think Maxi, even though he's still developing in this area, he's a better uh, creator for others. And uh, Shake's much more of an. Uh, they're both a little bit of isolation, just get a bucket on their own. But Shake more so in my mind. Maxi at least seems to have the flashes of growth in this area. Uh, the best case scenario for Shake is when all he has to do is just come in and score and just do his thing and be that. So trying to pigeon-toe him into kind of a, a point guard kind of role doesn't necessarily work. I also don't think it worked as great playing him with George Hill, which I know was the, the big thought process of moving him off ball last year and one of the motivators for that trade. But frankly, I didn't see enough there. And I think more of that falls on George Hill than Shake, just because he just simply didn't have as much left in the tank as we were hoping. But he – he is a guy in my mind. I think Doc likes him, but he's a guy in my mind that I think should be getting his minutes cut more so than anybody. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, Georgia was definitely a disappointment, man. I was excited for him. I thought that he was going to be a much better player than he turned out to be. Yeah. He's very, like, nothing exciting. I mean, not that he's ever been an exciting player, but he, he normally did everything, like, well. And it was just kind of like he did everything, like, at best, he was average at at the things that he did. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't know about Shake. Like it, we would we would be laughing at ourselves going back and listening, you know, a year and a half ago to what we were saying about Shake during our first like fifteen episodes of this podcast. We would be chuckling at ourselves. Yeah, we we really did think, and I was right there with you. Like we were we were all on board on the Shake Milton train. But I mean, I, I think there's definitely like the the thing about Shake is that there's. To, there's there's things left to be de- like more to be desired from shake like he's shown so many different times that there is a very strong good skilled nba player in him but then there's times where it's just like so bad like he was really 
on track to be the sixth man of the year. Yeah. And then just went through a stretch where he was awful. Like you can't play Shake Milton. He's not he's not able to be on the floor. Um, and I think he does get wrapped up in his own game a lot. I, I think a lot of times he's focused on himself and maybe that's, you know, maybe that's what he's put in there for. And maybe that's what they think his job is to, you know, all right, shake, go get yours. Because mm. um, we've seen that be like kind of how they, they play him in, in that type of role. But like he's not Jordan Clarkson. So taking the shots that he takes sometimes and yeah them being like bad and ruining the flow of the offense and hurting the team in the process is something that you just can't deal with where like if you're talking about Maxi, you're talking about Isaiah Joe or you're talking about really any of the other guards that are going to be out in front of him. Um, they might not give you as much upside as a score, but they definitely don't give you the downside that Shake Milton gives you. So like, I, like you said, I think it's, it's clear that he's probably going to be the, the odd one out um, alongside Isaiah Joe, maybe. Yeah, but, like I don't know what they do with him. Like, what do you even do? You just let him sit there. Well, and to be fair to Shake, like there's certainly been games that he is borderline one, one for this one, team. Yeah. And uh, you think about that one playoff game where he was literally out of the rotation, and Doc just kind of threw him in. It's just kind of something from his back pocket, and he went. He he was the first bench scoring points of the game for that, and led the team. That was in the third quarter of uh, of the game, and he was the first bench scoring points, which is so depressing. Yeah. But uh, like without him, we probably don't win that game, and. We're probably yeah, look feeling even more sour about the offseason right now. But uh I don't know. It's it's is interesting. Uh I it's I feel bad for him in a way. He still is a if I'm another team, I think he's a guy that I would be targeting just because he has one of the best contracts in the NBA with a, a little over a mil a year. Uh that's phenomenal value for it, what his skill set brings and what he can provide to a team. And uh given a different if there wasn't a if Maxi wasn't on this team, I think we would still be talking ourselves into how good shake is and trying to hype him up as a significant part of the rotation. And frankly, I still think he can be like a, a bench contributor and be good somewhere. I just, I just think he's a notch below what we need and what we have in, in Maxi. And uh, frankly, it, it is not his fault for why he's out, but I, I don't think he belongs with the same kind of territory that he has for the last couple of years. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It's uh, I mean, that's the NBA for you though. Like, he had an opportunity. The opportunity kind of went with him. And then, like, now we're in a position where Maxi is definitely a more desirable player. Matisse is definitely a more desirable player. Um, he can't, like, and then that's where it stops. You know what I mean? Like, Shea can really only play the two at this point. Like, he needs the ball in his hands to be productive. Otherwise, he's just kind of a shell. Um, mm -hmm. And then, on top of that, like, he can't be a point guard. So, you can't put him anywhere else but, like, the two guard. So if you're behind at this point, like Curry, Green, Maxi, Isaiah Joe, and Matisse and Furkan, maybe like there's just it's a lot. There's too many bodies. There's too many bodies and a lot of guys that do things that he doesn't do, um, and a lot of things that he can't do that other people do. So like, I feel bad for him because I like Shake and I've liked um, watching him grow, but I like maybe it is time just to see him elsewhere and see if he can like on a team that needs something like, I don't know if you send him to freaking new Orleans or something like a team that just needs someone to do something. Um, he's, he's going to be a good piece somewhere. And I think, you know, maybe it's better suited for the Sixers to make a move like that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And again, once again, he's always going to have value because of that contract. And uh, yeah. he's certainly a guy I'd be reaching for as a sweetener in the Simmons deal. Uh, and with all these guys that we talk about, I still think regardless of what win or win or what trade happens, if there is like a, a star, a legitimate star that becomes available at any point this year, I totally expect Daryl Moore to be digging into the young guys and this deep bench and the picks and take everything. And I, like, I think that is a big reason why we are so deep right now. Cause there, I still think this team in order to fully win a championship, which must remain the, the goal is, we need another top level scorer and a top level player with that and sacrificing guys like guys, like all the guys we're talking so great about right now is worth it. and something that may need to be done. So yeah. I, I definitely think the depth comes with a lot of flexibility with that as well. And to some extent it's a waiting game in that area. Yeah. And like, that is part of the game. Like it, it's all chess and, like it's hard to even guess where what Daryl Moore is thinking or, or what he's seeing because obviously 
his day looks a lot different than ours. Like we, we, we clock out for a half hour uh, to do something like this while he, this is his nine to five. So, or, or yeah. like probably like nine to 10 PM. This is what Daryl Moore is doing. So like, I'm again, I'm interested to see what happens. Um, there is some security knowing that there's a lot of guys on this team that can play. So if there's a move made, um, it's next man up and a lot of guys are going to have to step up. And I think, every, I think all the, especially the young guys, everyone's ready for that. So, well, we do talk highly of everyone. If something needs to happen, they're gonna, they're, those are gonna be the first guys to go, and that has to be okay too. Um, but it'll definitely be something to keep an eye out for, you know, with Maxi and what he's able to do, or or what they're thinking for him and his role this year, um, on top of everything else that that might happen before October twentieth. So we are closing in on that day. It's gonna be here before we know it. I'm super. The like. I just forget about the pain. Like the, I yeah. forget about the fact that they broke my heart like three months ago and I'm back ready to watch, you know, the Sixers play basketball again, regardless of the capacity of which I can watch. So um, that being said, we don't have too much to talk about, so we will wrap it up here. We're going to keep this going. Uh, check out the YouTube PicSwap podcast. Follow follow us at on Twitter at PicSwap pod. Uh, you can follow Sean at, at Sean underscore Bernard one. Follow me at JS brain 17. Uh, check us all out. We've been doing a lot of stuff, so uh, we appreciate it, and we'll talk to you guys soon.